If you don't mind, I have a few questions. I'd be delighted to help you if I'm able. Who was that man in your office? Geoffrey McCullum, actual leader of the Guard of Prewen. I suspect he's the man behind the rebirth of this old and dusty society. They know I'm here now, don't they? I can guarantee one thing. The Guard of Prewen would never dare to attack the hospital while I'm in charge here. What do they hope to achieve? Their ultimate goal is the eradication of all vampires in the country. They see you as a threat to mankind, Jonathan. What exactly happened here while I was absent? Hampton turned, quite violently as it happened, lurking about, attacked Miss Jones. To say he created quite a commotion would be an understatement. Are you sure it was Hampton that killed Miss Jones? Well, there was blood everywhere, but no body. And you know the state she was in? I fear for what he did with her. Hopefully he just hid the corpse. How did the guard of Prewen come to hear of this? McCullum has spies everywhere. He will jump at any opportunity to disparage the Brotherhood and show his contempt. I recently tried to enter a church. It has been a very unpleasant experience. The Brotherhood's research on the matter of faith and vampirism has proved somewhat insubstantial, to say the least. Is this proof that I'm cursed in the eyes of the Divine? The wrath of the Almighty? There's no way of knowing. It could be subconscious guilt, or irrational fear, or deep-seated beliefs. It's hard to explain in terms of science, that's for sure. I'm sure Lady Ashbury will have far greater insight into this matter than little old me. I just recently met the strangest creature in Whitechapel. He was immense. He mocked me and accused me of hypocrisy. Perhaps it was a skull. London's streets are overflowing with them these days. It was a vampire, all right. But what kind, I'm not sure. He was large and very fast. If you find anything more about this creature, the Brotherhood would greatly appreciate any information you could spare. He was observing me with the obvious intent to do me harm. His very presence evoked a palpable sense of menace. You need to be careful, Jonathan. You've no idea what this creature really is. Thank you, Edgar. Sean Hampton lives and breathes for the well-being of his flock. There's no other place he would go but the docks. I have wasted too much energy for so little result. Good evening, Nurse Brannigan. Good evening, Doctor. What can you tell me about the recent events in the hospital? That Mr. Hampton killed Miss Jones in her room, then ran away. And did you see all this? No. I was working by the tents when it all happened. I only entered the room when they asked me to clean up the blood. Where is Miss Jones's body? I don't know. I'd imagine the morgue. It all happened so quickly. Did you see Sean Hampton leave the hospital? I think I saw a silhouette exiting the hospital gates after the shouting started. At first I thought it was someone who was just scared, but well, maybe it was him. Goodbye, nurse. Call me if you need assistance. Good evening, Mr. Elwood. Evening, Dr. Reed. Can you tell me anything about recent events at the hospital? Before the shouts and the noises, I think I heard whispers coming from the stairs. Two voices, maybe more. Did you recognize the voices? What did they say? I couldn't hear. Sounded like they were arguing or something. Goodbye for now, Mr. Elwood. What on earth happened here?
Oh, Jonathan, I cannot believe my eyes. Poor woman, butchered by some savage scal. Yes, and I'm afraid I'm at least partially responsible. The man, the scal, I brought him here. Jonathan, how could you say such a thing? Forgive me if I feel despondent. For there seems to be no end to the suffering and death that surrounds us. I'm always here for you, Jonathan. I have experienced a certain difficulty when faced with holy symbols or trying to enter religious buildings. Have you? Now that's quite a question. I don't know why, but yes, it has happened to me. Is this a sign? The hand of God in action? Are we repellent unto heaven? I don't have the answers, Jonathan. But I believe superstition and magic is just fact awaiting the lens of science. Aren't you frightened? Very little scares me, my dear. To be compelled to avoid symbols of faith does not concern me. What do you know of Ascalon? I was threatened by a creature, a vampire in Whitechapel. Stating I had to obey the law of conduct. What more can you tell me about him? He was bigger than a man. Huge, in fact. He seemed to radiate violence. I thought he was going to tear me apart. Then he vanished. Fergal, the executioner of Ascalon. You were fortunate he was not after you, but rather out doing his master's bidding. What is Ascalon? The Ascalon Club are the most powerful vampires in Britain, and exert tremendous influence. Take my advice and stay well away. Have you embraced this woman, like the other patient, this Mr. Renfield? Her name was Amelia. And no, I did not kill her. I vowed a very long time ago that I would never take another life, unless they ask. Is there sufficient vitality in the blood of the sick and dying patients? Yes, Jonathan. The hunger gnaws at me every waking hour. Frankly, I'm starving. Temptation surrounds us. Rich, vital. How can you resist? Over the years, any pleasure I once gleaned from feeding is long gone. I drink for sustenance. And though I still thirst for more, I restrain myself. Thank you, my lady. I hope to see you again soon.
Good evening, sir. Who the fuck are you? Don't you see I'm busy here? Dr. Jonathan Reed, that's who I am. And who are you? Ah, some fancy gentleman we've got here. Clear off. We don't want strangers on our streets. So you won't tell me your name, then? The name is Booth Digby. Maybe I'll ask my boys to break one or two of your bones, just so you remember it. What can you tell me about this part of town? Things ain't that bad, thanks to us. We give people what they need, and we control this borough. Well, you're not doing a very good job. People are still dying here, like everywhere else. Yeah, well, we can't be everywhere all the time. And Edwina says if we can find more guns, we could be more efficient. More efficient? Really? You should probably tell Edwina that guns are useless against diseases and infections. Incredible. You know what? You're lucky she can't hear you right now. She's more smart than patient. My sweet queen of the docks. Goodbye, Mr. Digby. I need someone who can read this. Are you all right, sir? What are you doing in a place like this? I'm not sure that's any of your business. I hope you realize that staying here will put your life at great risk. Ha! I'm not afraid of these guards of Prewen, or whatever these thugs call themselves. I can still kick some respect into those youngsters. I wasn't specifically referring to them, but are you really after these men? Why? They took my boy! I've had no news since he joined that crazy gang. So I decided to come and find him myself, to get some answers. I see. But as I said, your life is at risk if you stay here. And I'm not referring to the gangs either. You should leave, sir. Well, this part of town used to be nicer, let's say. Perhaps you're right. This isn't the best way to save Andrew. under the blood on the back of the case. Jack Gillingham. Maybe I should return this watch to his family.
Every night, a dark night. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Why must it always be a good evening? I was just being polite. I'm Dr. Reed. I'd like to ask you some questions, if I may. Don't like questions, or doctors. And the name is Seymour Fishburn, if you must know. What's your occupation? I take care of my mum. That's what I do. She's the only good thing in my life. Even though I don't treat her so good. You seem upset. Is something bothering you? I lost the necklace I bought her. I'm a fucking idiot. A worthless idiot. Goodbye, Mr. Fishburne. This is a slaughterhouse. From Seymour to my beloved mother Stella. Fishburn, that sneaky bastard. Hello, boy. Uh, hello. Good evening. Did I scare you? You have nothing to fear from me. No, it's just that people prefer to avoid me. Well, I won't. I'm a doctor. My name is Rufus, sir. Rufus Kingsbury. Are you alone? Where is your family? I, I don't have any. My parents are dead. So you have no home? You're sleeping rough? No. I mean, yes. I live on the streets. I have no home. You should be careful, Rufus. There are things that lurk in the shadows of this city. Things that prey on the lonely and the desperate. Well, I've known worse. I'm not all alone. I have Mrs. Fishburne. She's been very kind to me. Why do you think she's so considerate? I can't say, sir. I guess she's a good soul. Sometimes it's like she replaces the mother I lost, even if we're not related. So long, Rufus. Be careful. Take care. Don't you think Miss Fishburne is nice to us? But I always have the feeling she's hiding something. For now, you're still the only real friend I have, Jack. Good evening, madam. I'm Dr. Reed. Could I come in? Why? What do you want? I work at the Pembroke Hospital. I'm investigating the flu epidemic in this area. Oh, the Spanish flu. Well, that's quite liberal of you, Doctor. But this is no time to be knocking at people's doors. The disease takes away the good people too, madam. Why not let me in? It's Mrs. Fishburne. Stella Fishburne. And yes, indeed. Why not let a doctor in? Please don't stay too long, sir.
So you have questions about the flu, then? Yes, among other things. Forgive my rudeness at the door. It's just my son doesn't like strangers coming in the house. I believe you may find this necklace of interest. What is it? I don't understand. It's a gift your son was hoping to give you. But I'm afraid it links him to the nearby murders. You mean this belongs to one of his victims? Jesus. I knew this day would come. Please, Dr. Reed, accept this for your trouble and leave me be. This day? You mean you already knew? Are you buying my silence? I will not be an accomplice in this. What? No, no. My son's crimes distress me more than you can imagine. But I'm his mother. I love him, I do. Goodbye, Miss Fishburne. Take care of yourself. Good evening, Mr. Fishman. Yeah, yeah. Did you take pleasure in killing them, Seymour? All those people, all those lives extinguished. I take no pleasure from it. Just gives me peace. Stills the anger. For a time. This rage you feel. Have you ever been able to control it? Resist it? I... I tried. For my mum, I tried for her. Telling the truth made me feel better. For a while. Goodbye, Mr. Fishburne. Good evening, Mr. Fishman. Yeah, yeah. Why is your mother protecting you, Seymour? I'm her son. She's the only one who knows me. Sometimes I think she knows me better than I know myself. I understand you love her, but can't you see the awful situation you've put her in? Do you think my mum would have a better life if I were dead? She seems so sad to know me sometimes. I understand your mother's situation. Obtaining justice at the price of betraying her own flesh, it's quite a dilemma. It might be my mum's wish that I end up swinging from a hangman's noose, but she wouldn't want to be the one who ties a knot round my neck. Goodbye, Mr. Fishburne. Good evening, Mr. Fishman. Yeah, yeah. Do you require medical assistance? <laughs> That's something I didn't expect to hear again. A doctor concerned with the health of his patients. Yeah. I could use some help. On several matters, in fact. I don't know which kind of doctor you're used to dealing with, but it's a doctor's purpose to heal people. And is it your purpose as well, Mr. Reed? I would say it's a convenient way for gaining people's trust. Goodbye, Mr. Fishburne. Evening, Rufus. Evening, Mr. Reed. How come you consider it your only friend? I found Jack when he was a baby, alone amongst dead rats. Poison, probably. 
He was the weakest, but he survived. Just like me with my parents. Like you and your parents? When I was eight, my parents died in a car accident. Rumor says I didn't get a scratch. So long, Rufus. Be careful. Take care. Stupid brat is gone. Good. I was tired of the maggot always hanging around our house anyway. My God, Seymour. Have you hurt the boy? Of course not. Why do you care so much about that cockroach? Do I need to talk to rats to get some attention too? Don't be so childish. You know I love you, Seymour. But you worry more about that stupid maggot. Don't speak about him that way. Rufus has always been the kindest boy. Yeah? Unlike your real son, right? Evening, Rufus. Evening, Mr. Reed. Rufus, tell me what you really think about Seymour Fishburn. Seymour, he... he just scares me. A lot. Actually, he scares many people round here, even big fellows. You mean his brutality is infamous, even in this shady part of town? That's impressive. Yes, sir. How someone like that can be related to Mrs. Fishburne, well, it beggars belief. The patience of a mother for her child knows no limits. None of us would be here otherwise. You're right. And I certainly didn't mean any disrespect to the woman who takes such good care of me. Do you need help? A real doctor caring about me. That's a first. I feel like a real person. A real doctor treats everyone the same, Rufus. I don't know what to say. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So long, Rufus. Be careful. Take care. Good evening, miss. I am Dr. Reed. May I ask you a few questions? Who are you? What do you want? As I just told you, I'm a doctor. From the Pembroke Hospital, actually. The Pembroke Hospital, you say? I ain't paying any bill left by Clay. I'm not here to collect payment, miss. Miss Edwina Cox. So what do you want, then? Fancy buying something from me, maybe? What can you tell me about your work? I'm a businesswoman. I buy and sell things. And I send my wet boot boys after anyone who don't play nice with me. Gang member and shopkeeper. Can't be easy running double shifts. If you're interested, I may find use of a doctor who can freely walk across the city, you know. I'm not interested in a career in the criminal underworld, Miss Cox. Fair enough. Stay away from us, then, if you don't want to get hurt. Or worse. Since my return from the war, I don't feel that concerned by threats, knives, or even bullets, if you must know. That's exactly what that stupid trade unionist claimed after he attacked one of us. Booth and I reminded him a bullet beats words every time. What can you tell me about this part of town? You can't trust anyone around here. As soon as you lower your guard, you can be sure some arsehole will take advantage of you. You sound like you're thinking of somebody in particular. Take the grave diggers of Southwark. They must pay me every week, but it looks like they forgot who gave them permission to steal from the dead. Looting corpses in a mass grave. That's... That is a new low. Whatever. Hey, since you're a doctor and all, maybe you can access that forbidden area and remind those bastards what they owe.
Boo Digby looks at you with love-struck eyes. Tell me, Edwina, is the feeling mutual? You have no idea how refreshing it can be for a woman to receive all the pleasure she needs. For once. Hmm. I'll take your word for it. What is it, Doctor? A woman's not supposed to talk about these things. I believe you manipulated Booth Digby to get everything you wanted from him, both inside and outside the bedroom. The poor bastard is good to me, if you must know. He makes me feel good, and that's a first. So you're just like any other couple, after all, are you not? Yeah, we're so ordinary that I'd put a bullet in his head if he ever cheated on me. Goodbye, Miss Cox. Mark my words, miss. These murders are the work of a vampire. A vampire? Whatever do you mean? I'm a tracker of these creatures. A vampire hunter. You best be off to your hunting, then. For if the sewer dog is back, and hunting all these poor folk, he needs a catching. A sewer dog? What's it look like? It's an old story. A monster with daggers for teeth and icy claws. He comes of a sudden, nighttime, claiming innocence, then vanishes. Teeth, claws, murders by night? Your sewer dog is my business. He's the kind of prey I hunt, milady. Not a drop of blood left in his body. This is the work of a vampire. Good evening, sir. Have you witnessed any suspicious activity or strange events recently? And what do you define as a strange event? More to the point, who are you? My name is Ichabod Throgmorton, vampire hunter extraordinaire and warden of the East End. A vampire hunter? Really? I know what you're thinking. I'm just another lunatic howling at the moon, but I'm not. The bloodsuckers exist, and they're close. Mr. Throgmorton, I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed. I'd like to hear more about these vampires you're hunting. A man of science? Well, I'll be glad to enlighten you. I'm looking for Sean Hampton. Can you help me, Mr. Throgmorton? The sad saint? He should be at his night asylum at this hour. But I cannot tell you how to find it, sorry. Really? Why is that? It's nothing personal, Doctor. I'm sure your intentions are good, but people who sleep there... They have plenty of reasons to hide. I could make you tell me, but I respect your refusal. You really believe Sean is a saint, don't you? All I will say is this. Gossip has it that when he was a child, he was molested. By a priest, of all people. Funny thing is, though, it only strengthened his faith. Maybe at least you can tell me who could help me find him. Tell you what, go and chat with Tom Watts. He's a bartender and good judge of character. If he talks to you, then it's fine by me. Goodbye, and good hunting, Mr. Throckmorton. Good evening, sir. Whatever. Don't you recognize me? We met a few nights ago. Don't take it personally. I spent a lot of energy forgetting what I did the night before. Yes, you had definitely drunk too much then as well. I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed. I'm Dyson Delaney. I'll try to remember you this time. I hope I live long enough to see them wet and get what's coming. Surely you must have had dreams and expectations when you were young. Like everybody else. Sure. I wanted things to change. To really change. And to change for good. The bigger the dream, the harder the fall. He didn't deserve this. Sounds like you were an idealist. Which is honorable. No, sir. I was an anarchist and I believed that exclusive property is a robbery in nature. I wanted a new world to rise from the ashes, Dr. Reed.
Is there anything in particular that you like about this part of town? Except for the cheap drinks, I mean. How dare you say such a thing? I love this neighborhood. So friendly, so joyful. No reason at all to rejoice, then? Life is hopeless and then we die, is that it? Let me tell you a story. All right. Go on. A few years ago, when I believed a resolute man could change things around here for good, a tragedy occurred nearby. What kind of tragedy? It was a bomb. A bomb that exploded and killed many people. Metal and blood everywhere. Shouts, fire, broken window of the shoe shop, the torn street light. You lost people you loved that day, didn't you? I've lost everything. But you know what the worst part is? I don't even remember where it happened. I've drunk so much to forget it. And now I can't remember where it was. I can't pay my homage to the dead. I'm sorry, Mr. Delaney. It's okay. If you ever find the place, just leave a flower for me there. Even if you tell me where it is, I'm not sure I'd memorize it. Inebriation aside, do you need medical help? Yes. I feel sicker than usual these days. Take this, then. And perhaps you could try to slow down the alcohol intake, too. Hey, Doc, you don't really want me to stop the only remedy I can afford. Goodbye, Mr. Delaney. Poor Jack. He didn't deserve this. Good evening, Tom. Good evening, sir. How are you tonight? Back to the docks, are we? You remember me, then? Of course I do. You're that man who seemed so lost when he entered my bar a few nights ago. Thank you for your hospitality. I'm Jonathan Reed, by the way. Uh, I'm still Tom Watts. Welcome back, Doctor. Tom, I need to find Sean Hampton as quickly as possible. I've been told you could help me. I heard the sad saint was recovering at Pembroke Hospital. Did he leave or something? I believe he returned to his flock. Can you confirm that? Oh, I bet you're right. Sean can't help but worry about the poor and sick. Oh, I guess it has something to do with what happened to him as a baby. Please, tell me. Oh, I don't like to gossip, but I heard that the sad saint was abandoned as a baby in front of a Catholic orphanage in Dublin. It would explain his faith and need to help everyone. The important thing is I find him. Quickly. Uh, why not try his night asylum? He takes care of those who need a meal or a roof there. Where is it? It's in an old warehouse, northwest of here. Just follow the bank to the west and go north when you reach the end of the pier. It didn't How is it you can keep this place open? This part of town doesn't seem particularly safe. Well, since everybody needs a drink, my pub is considered neutral ground by most groups. Since I'm here, is there anything I can do? Well, perhaps, Doctor. Peace partly depends on my stock of gin. Uh, with the epidemic, my supplies are running low. How could a physician help you in this matter? I have a small warehouse just past the quarantine line. Perhaps, with you being a doctor, you could go there and come back? Doctors aren't immune to disease, you know. Very well. Show me where it is, and I'll see what I can do. Oh, thank you, sir. Here's the key to get in. You're about to save many dry throats. Goodbye, Mr. Watts.
of the week. Yes. The place has changed since the explosion, but it was definitely here. I should find some way to pay my respects. May all who suffered from this tragedy find or rest in peace. This place. Rain may have washed away the blood, but not the memory. My poor Mary. This is my watch. Damn grave robbers.
Without the wet boot. Good evening, Miss Cox. Hello again, Dr. Reed. What do you want? I managed to reach the mass grave in Southwark. It was not pleasant. Spare me the details, Dr. Reed. All I want to know is what happened to those bastards who owed me money. I'm afraid those bastards, as you call them, are in the mass grave. Dead. Shit. That money would have been useful. Well, I'll tell my boys to avoid the place if it's that dangerous. Yes. Everybody should avoid that place until further notice. Okay then, Doctor. It looks like you deserve your reward after all. The wet boot boys thank you for your help. Tell me your feelings about Booth's belief in monsters, Edwina. It makes him look weak in front of the boys. That's my feeling about it. But ghosts don't scare me. You don't believe he really saw something, then? I don't care what he saw or not. All I know is that a real man keeps his fears to himself if he wants to be obeyed. Goodbye, Miss Cox. I should just run as far away from this place as I Good evening, Mr. Delaney. What? Ah, oh, you're that doctor. I found the location of the explosion, Mr. Delaney. I placed a flower for you where it happened, just as you asked. Really? That's, that's so kind. I never thought someone would... Well, thank you, doctor. It's nothing, really. And I'm sorry for your loss. What? No, I, I didn't know them. No car was supposed to park there that day. Stupid bastard, why did he park there? You're the man who hit that bomb. I don't want to talk about it. Leave me alone. I sense your guilt, Dyson. Why is that? Did you not think violence was an acceptable political tool? I still believe our fight was just by killing an innocent couple who were just at the wrong place at the wrong time. No way. That bomb also killed you that day, don't you see? You just die a slower death, drink by drink. I know. Maybe I deserve judgment. Until that day, I'll just be Dyson the drunk, not Dyson the murderer. Goodbye, Mr. Delaney. He's just another lost orphan. Tom has so much alcohol, he could keep this district afloat for quite some time.
Seems like the guard of Freewen is on Sean Hampton's track. are deep, the result of rabid rage. If this is Sean's doing, he's become a murderous beast. just been slaughtered by a vampire. The body's still warm. Good evening, miss. I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed. May I come in? I already took my medication, doctor. Uh, but thank you. I'm sorry. Your medication? Have we met before? Don't tease me like that, Jack. Sorry. What? I think I should come in, miss. I'd like to check if everything is okay, what with the epidemic spreading across London. An epidemic, you say? How terrible. I had no idea. But where are my manners? Please do come in, Doctor. You... you are a doctor, yes? So, Dr. Tippett, <laughs> what brings you back here? I heard whispers you had a job at that fancy hospital. I told you my name is Jonathan Reed. Don't you remember? Of course I do. I remember my name too. Gillingham. But you may call me Enid, Doctor. I'm very happy to see you again. Do you require medical attention, Miss? I'm glad you asked, Dr. Tippett. I must confess I haven't felt that well of late. 
I'll try my best. Here, take this. And please, try to get some rest. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you very much. Goodbye, Miss Gillian. Good evening. I'm Dr. Reed. Do you need any help? Rest assured, I will help you, sir. Martin Nightingale, at your service. Please, take a look at my wares. Ha! <laughs> your merchandise. I don't really see anything worth having. No offense. None taken, sir. But please, I need to eat. Perhaps if you keep looking, you'd see something that takes your fancy. What can you tell me about the neighborhood? Have you got any friends around these parts? Not really. Miss Gillingham smiles and says kind words, but I know she's lost her marbles, especially since her son died. Tell me about this crazy woman. Madness is often mistaken for other conditions. <laughs> the poor woman's mad, all right. Kind and all, but she has so much trouble remembering things. She's taken me for a son more than once. I found this watch. It belonged to Miss Gillingham, but I thought you might find it useful. That makes sense. She would have forgotten about the watch by the next day. If you say so. Take this for your trouble, Dr. Reed. I will not forget your gesture, I swear. Goodbye. Please, sir. Come and have a gander. Why the long face, Doctor? Is it all that worries you, Sean? My long face? Really? This is a blessing for me to become a Skull. Immortality gives me more time and energy, if truth be known, to run a shelter. What more could I want? Since you left Pembroke, the amount of blood that has been shed, it's hard to believe you, Sean. Ask what you will. As the Lord is my shepherd, I will not speak a lie to you. Why return here? This is my home. These people are my flock. You will always find me where I am needed. Wonders never cease. Scal managing an asylum. And what of you? A vampire doctor? Meals laid out before you? Yet you restrain? And what about William Bishop? He tried to take care of you. But this hunger, this... Thirst cannot be restrained. Alas, poor William. He had a good soul, but was weak in spirit. He could not shake the thirst for booze, never mind blood. But have faith. My will is far stronger than his. Aren't you afraid of what you've become? We are blessed, Doctor. Can't you see it? The Lord has made us able to walk amongst the plague and aid those that need it. Do you think this is a blessing when God's own house and holy symbols repel you? If that is your burden, Doctor, so be it. But I do not fear the cross, nor am I forced to take the life of another. My kind doesn't share your imperfections. But you must drink blood now to survive. No, not your scripture. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. So saith the Lord. I only need to eat flesh, no blood. Why did you kill Miss Jones at the Pembroke Hospital? Killed old Harriet? You must be mad, Doctor. Why would I do such a thing? 
But you were close to her. Of course. But she was lost. Separated from the fold. She did not see the hand of the divine in my blessed condition. So you claim Miss Jones' death was not by your hand, nor the other incidents at Pembroke? Though Harriet was an angry, spiteful woman, she was one of God's creatures. I have nothing but love for all he has made. People have been murdered. I've seen the blood. I don't believe you can be trusted. Have a little faith, Doctor. If you will follow, I will guide you to the light. How do you plan to do that? Take this key of the old sewers. The entrance is by the river bank, south from here. There you'll find all the proof you need. Very well. You have definitely intrigued me. I hope you're right, Sean. I'll be here when you return. If you still think I'm a threat then, well, I'll surrender myself to your judgment.